Hi guys, this is Dr. Joseph here. In this video, I will teach you how to use the cell range function. So that is our fourth objective to use the cell range function to name each and every column. So this is a table. We have this uh, table here, the data table. And this what I want to do is I want to give um, separate name for each of these columns. So suppose this particular column in my table which says customer name, it has all these values, names of some 30 different customers. The same way the next column which is amount due which has all these values from B2 to B31 which are numeric value. So like this every column I want Excel to give a name. It's like this when I click over here which is cell H1 you can see in the name box it says H1. So similar to that I want to give a name to the range of cell, a group of cells together. Um, I can do this, uh, I can give a name to this particular cell as well. So for example, let me take this one. Mm. So this cell has the value as results. But I want Excel to name it as Excel. So when I click here, you can look at the name box. It says O2, which is the cell address column O and the second row. <clears throat> but now I want to change this name to output say for example so how do you do that is first I have to select the cell and then when I uh, I should go to the name box where I have the name of the cell which is O2 just left click on that particular value O2 now you can see it is being highlighted in blue color now it is in the edit mode where I can change the name so I will change the name to O U T P U T output and press enter when I press enter now suppose if I click here you can see the cell name is coming as N1 now when I click here on this particular cell O2 now you can see O2 will not appear the what the name that is displayed to the user is output which I defined it for that particular cell so similar to this a group of cell can be given a separate name in Excel so like that I want to give a separate name for all these values in different columns so similar to how I gave it for this individual cell, I can select a group of cells and then I can rename it. For instance, I can select all these cells and then give a name. I just click on this particular name box and then I can give a name. But that is the manual way of doing it. But there is in Excel the automatic uh, you know, feature wherein by default what Excel will do is Excel can take the header values. So these are the header names which are um, there for for the table data table so excel will use these values and then it will assume those values as the cell range names so suppose if i uh, for this particular column all these values over here from a2 to a31 will be given the name as customer names so that's how you know we can use excel to automatically take the values of the header um, call, uh, row and then use it as the cell range name. Um, before we do that, first we have to select the entire table. <coughs> and please note, uh, cell uh, address name or cell range name uh, will not accept a space between two names. So if at all you want to give a name, give a single name or if you want to give a double name, then you should separate it with the underscore symbol otherwise excel will show error message so now first you select the entire table now go to the formula in the menu bar go to the formula in the menu bar in that you see a section called as defined names where you have an option called as create from selection you just left click on that a small dialog box opens can you just read this? It says create names from selection, uh, create names from the values in the top row and also from the values left column. So this small boxes with a tick mark is called as a check box. So the check box will have a check mark or a tick mark. 
it means that particular option is selected so I wanted Excel to use the values in a top row to be used as the cell range names I don't want Excel to use the values in the uh, left column so I just click on this left column once and then you would observe that this tick mark disappears it means that I have removed the uh, tick mark from that particular checkbox so now Excel will use only the values in the top row when I click OK you observe nothing has happened but uh, you go to this name box you click on this small inverted triangle over here left click on that now you can see Excel has named all the cell ranges with the values in the first row header row so for example to test I click on this credit underscore this and you will also observe that my first row values have a lot of space between the words but what Excel has done is Excel has replaced automatically all the spaces with the um, underscore symbol and that is how Excel is very handy so to um, you know take you uh, make you understand the cell range you just click on this particular uh, credit underscore days now you can see those cells from D2 to D31 is automatically selected so instead of me clicking and dragging and selecting the entire range of cells now I can use the uh, cell names and uh, with that easily I can do my selections so in this table we have only 30 records so it, it might be easy for you to click and drag and uh, select the range of cells imagine if a table has say 30,000 records or say 3 million records it's literally not possible to click and drag and select so instead we can use the cell range function to name uh, the group of cells which you want to name it now we are given the name but now uh, using that name I want to do some com calculations over here so you can read this use range function to name each and every column and then find the following by using the cell range so now what I am going to use, yeah, do is using this cell range names I am going to compute certain um, you know statistical uh, functions uh, in Excel the first one is I have to calculate total amount due which is a sum arithmetic function so our regular uh, formula to calculate uh, addition is equal to sum open bracket and then you have to click and drag the group of cells which you want to add but instead of clicking and dragging here we are going to use the cell name uh, cell range name so we have to calculate total amount due the total amount due is in the second column amount due so I want Excel to calculate the sum of all these cells from B2 to B31 instead of giving B2 is to B31 now I am going to give the cell range name which is amount underscore due so when I type AMO you can see here Excel automatically populates the cell range name which is amount underscore due what I will do is I have to just double click on that close the bracket press enter and this is the sum of that particular range of cells the second task is to find out the minimum due value so among this list of amount dues I have to find out the value which is the least for which we use a function called as min uh, in Excel so how do we insert a function we start with equal to you type min min and then the min function comes and then you just double click on that again I have to select the range of cells instead of doing the traditional way of selecting the range of cells now I am going to use the cell range name the cell range name remains the same amount underscore due because I am going to find the minimum value in the due amount so just double click on amount underscore due close bracket press enter and this is the least amount which is due from a particular client the third task is to find out the maximum due amount so we are still using the same column which is amount underscore due where now I have to find out uh, the maximum uh, no, amount which is due so we have to insert the formula here which start with equal to uh, in order to compute that we have a function called as max max and you type max you can see here max in the list I just double click on that 
bracket is already open instead of giving the cell range now I'm going to give the cell range name the name remains the same so I just type AMO and then immediately the amount underscore due which is the name for that particular group of cells is automatically populated what I will do is I have to just double click on that close the bracket press enter and this is the maximum amount which is due from a particular client the fourth task is to calculate the maximum credit days now where do you have the credit days which is the column D in this group of cells I have to find out which is the maximum value in this group of cells so now the cell range name is credit underscore days so I have to use the max function one more time because it's asking me to you find the maximum value max double click on that open bracket <coughs> now the cell range name is credit underscore days so I just type CRE now you can see how beautiful is that Excel automatically uh, populates the cell range name which is credit underscore days and what I will do is I have to just double click on that close the bracket and Excel gives the result second task is to find the minimum credit days again we are going to use the min function equal to min open bracket so then cell range name remains the same which is credit underscore days close the bracket press enter and this is the minimum credit days which is available that is 20 now we move on to the fifth uh, sorry sixth task which says find the fourth largest amount due so we move back to the amount due which is column B where I want to find out the fourth largest amount due for which we have a function called as large so we start with equal to you just type L A will get the large function over there just double click on that bracket is opened when you observe the screen you will understand excel is asking for two inputs the first input is array the second input is k in this case array is the range of cell which is nothing but amount underscore due so i just type amo you can see here amount underscore due automatically populates double click on that so whenever we give um, more than one input we have to separate it with a comma and a space second input is k which is in this case we need to find the fourth largest amount so it is numeric 4 so you can give it under double quotes numeric 4 you can close the bracket press enter and this is the fourth largest value in that particular column the seventh task is to find out the sixth smallest amount due so once again we are going to work on the B column which is amount underscore due we start with equal to in order to find the sixth smallest we have an option called as a function in Excel called as small S-M-A-L-L -L. if you type S-M-A you will get that particular function automatically populating over there just double click on that once again Excel is asking us two inputs one is RA and the other one is the K value so the RA it remains the same you just type A-M-O is amount underscore due and then comma space k is nothing but in this case it is 6 so you have to provide it under double quotes then close the bracket press enter and this is the sixth smallest amount which is due in that particular data sheet and then the next task h is count the OOD cases so now in this column is OOD or not where you have a couple of OODU and also a couple of OK cases so I want Excel to count and tell me how many cases are really OODU so for that we have function called as count if so we start with equal to just type C O U N T you can see there are a couple of count functions in this case I am going to use the function count if remember is a kind of a logical function where a if statement is being used to check a particular condition in this case the condition is if the value in that particular cell is written as overdue it means excel should count it as one if the value in that excel uh, in that particular cell is something else other than overdue excel should not count so the function reads like this equal to count only if in the range of cells if the value is equal to overdue so Excel is asking us two inputs, one is the range of cell, another one is the criteria. Which is the range of cell we have to give, which is the last column, G column. 
is overdue or not so you just type is on the keyboard and then you can see here that particular cell range automatically populates over there is overdue underscore r underscore not you just double click on that that is our first input so we have to separate it with a comma and a space the second input is criteria criteria is the value in that particular cell whether it is less than um, uh, sorry whether uh, if it is equal to overdue only then the excel should count so overdue is a text input i had to give it under quotes i type over due close the quotes close the bracket press enter so now what excel has done is it has counted all those cells in that particular range of cell which has the value exactly overdue so we have 29 cases out of 30 which are overdue as on date that is a very valuable information to track the last one is find the case that is overdue the most so here we have the overdue number of days for which it is overdue in which way to find the case which is overdue the most so many times we think that most means the maximum value so we may uh, you know um, may, we may be inclined to use the max function but in this case if you observe the data sheet the most OD case the OD cases are in negative numbers so we should not use the max function here there's a twist in the equation over there instead of using the max function now we have to use the min function because the values are in negative so use the min function double click on that <coughs> and then which is the cell name that is number of days uh, overdue so i have to type n o you can see excel automatically populates that particular cell range which is num number underscore of underscore day underscore audio whatever it is i just double click on that close the bracket press enter and this is the case which is OD the most which is the amount is pending for almost 166 days so with this uh, the cell range function is over thank you for watching if you like my video uh, like it and then give your comments Please subscribe for my channel and also share it to your friends. It may be useful to them as well. Thank you so much.